Hello, lovely people. Okay, so you just spent the last 40 hours finishing the epic story campaign, build a badass character, and you're pretty confident that you can handle everything this wicked world throws at you. But you're also aware that Outriders is a complete experience, straight out of the box, and doesn't have any life service elements. So, now what? We are not Outriders, we got you. Your job on Enoch is far from over. We don't want to go into any story spoilers, but for reasons that will become clear, mysterious points of interest have appeared across Enoch. New mysteries and stories are all waiting to be discovered, precious resources allowing for even more powerful gear. This is the place where advanced players really get to test their skills. It's a vicious but highly addictive post-campaign mode we call Expeditions. Check it out, this is how it works. After finishing the main storyline, you'll find yourself in a new camp. Among some other additions, you will notice a new station, with a map showing many new areas for you to explore. Oh and yes, it's pretty important to point out that you won't play any recycled content from the main campaign. Expeditions are big, handcrafted new levels, with their own mechanics, challenges and storyline. Before you start an expedition, you will notice the introduction of challenge tiers. It's pretty straightforward. The faster you are able to clear a mission, the richer the rewards. One important thing has changed though. You won't get any direct loot from your enemies. Instead you'll receive all your rewards at the end of an expedition. If you manage to complete it. Don't worry though, we won't leave you completely empty handed even if you fail all your attempts. In this example, you can score a good chunk of epic and rare loot, plus three new tiers. That's because we picked the highest at this moment available tier. You can always go lower to one of the previous unlocked tiers, if you feel your strategy or build isn't quite ready yet. To be more precise, your newly earned tiers are needed for two things. First, tiers progression unlocks new locations for your team to discover. Unlocking all 15 of them will grant you access to the final expedition, the Eye of the Storm. Second, and similar to our world tier system, selected challenge tiers also determine the difficulty of a mission. Here's the kicker. When we release Outriders, your maximum character level is 30, but your weapons and gear can reach up to level 50 in expeditions. Choosing a challenge tier level will show you the expected enemy level, which is also the same level range of the loot you will receive at the end of a mission. So before you head into an expedition, make sure to adjust your strategy and equipment accordingly. There's no other way to go about this. Expeditions are tough. No wait, let me rephrase that. Expeditions are brutal, but for good reason. This content is intended for battle-hardened outriders, who really want to get creative with the nitty and gritty details of specialized character builds. Feeling like a well-tuned demigod? Then this is the place for you. But you might want to bring some demigod co-op friends along as well. You'll need them. No matter how strong and well trained you think you are when you head into expeditions for the first time, you will need to become much more if you want to even reach the ultimate challenge. Stoked yet? Good. Before we dive more into expeditions though, we must first touch on another exciting subject that is heavily linked to this game mode. It's one of the most compelling and important core features of Outriders. Modding, crafting and everything in between. Upgrading and modifying your gear is an integral part of Outriders and gives you unparalleled freedom to strive for that perfect build. Dedicated players can experiment with a myriad of combinations to maximize and adapt their effectiveness for any given challenge. It's the foundation for countless hours of fun and in the case of expeditions, even mandatory for survival. Let's talk about mods first. Mods are passive skills that can significantly alter the way your weapons, armor or abilities work. For instance, they can add effects to your gunplay irrespective of your class, sticking your enemy with a nasty status effect like freeze, bleed, weaken, toxic and many more. With rare and specialized mods equipped, you can even get a taste of the powers of a whole different class. For example, Golem Slim is a legendary shotgun. It will grant its wield at a devastator's golem skin for 3 seconds after every killing shot. In this case, helping out a pyromancer. Or maybe you get lucky and find this little gem, which takes a page from the trickster's book about bending time and space. 
This mod will hit your opponent with a slow effect, like the Trickster's melee attack, but here we see a Technomancer making use of it. So broadly speaking, we're looking at two types of mods. General mods, as just described, can be applied to boost or alter how your weapons and armor work. But we also have skill mods, which are class specific. Those bad boys can amplify and change any of your 8 anomaly infused powers per class and can only be applied to armor. Like giving a trickster a second temporal slice. Or how about increasing the damage, radius and ammo of your Technomancer's rocket launcher? By equipping the Spike Forest mod, a Devastator is able to stick his worries on much more than just one skewer. All our mods are segmented into three tiers and you're able to collect them by dismantling the found gear that holds them. The rarity of a piece will determine what mod tier and amount of mods it might spawn with. Except for our legendary gear, which has dedicated mods that can only be found on these specific items. This would be the mods in the tier 3 category for instance. So far so good. Now here's a really cool thing. Once collected, you can apply and mix match your mods however you want. Let's say you went through hell and back on a challenge, got lucky and walked away with the legendary assault rifle Absolute Zero. Yes, it absolutely wreaks havoc and freezing bullets are awesome. But you know what's even more awesome? Exactly, frozen enemies that get struck by lightning. So let's get to it. Luckily I found a legendary weapon called Thunderbird earlier in the game. And with my much higher level now, I decided to dismantle it and go for the mods. Quick piece of intel though. If a weapon already has two mods slotted, you can only change one of those two mods. Now let's select the ultimate Storm Whip mod, the one we scored earlier from the Thunderbird, and the slot on the weapon with the mod we want to replace. Now all we have to do in order to get this new dream weapon build is to spend a little of our resources. In this case, 396 iron. Beautiful. And this is just one little example how you can alter and upgrade every single piece of gear in Outriders. So what else can we do in this crafting table? Improve rarity lets us improve the primary parameters of every item that isn't epic or legendary. That's firepower for weapons and armor for your wearables. By the way, hovering over the crafting options will reveal a color code explaining what rarity is needed for each craft. Here we look at Unusual, Rare, Epic and Legendary. Next up, Swap Variant. Here you can alter how your weapon fires and behaves in the field. Each weapon offers different variants depending on the type of weapon. You can unlock even more variants as your character level progresses. And last but not least, Level Up. Which is pretty much as straightforward as it sounds. Similar to improve rarity, raising a level of your equipment will boost firepower or armor. A thing is pretty obvious now. If you're really into tinkering with your equipment, Outriders will give you a lot of creative freedom to do just that. With about 350 individual mods across weapons, armor and skills, players have a lot of possibilities to experiment and home in on that perfect build. Also keep in mind, everything we just saw in the crafting department is directly linked to this. Fine-tuning your skills and equipment in conjunction with the skill tree. A skill tree that you can respec at any time without any cost. And this is where things really get interesting. Makes you wonder how deep this rabbit hole goes, doesn't it? Expeditions will challenge you and your team not only on a skill level, but also on how well your builds are tuned and in sync with another. That's why going deep into customization aspects of Outriders is not only super fun, but also vastly improves your lifespan on Enoch in general. Tune and optimize your skill tree for the challenge ahead and find effective ways to complement the available powers from your Outrider squad mates. Especially when you want to take on higher world tiers in a story campaign for instance. Okay, we covered crafting and upgrading your gear. Let's talk a little bit more about expeditions. As I said in the beginning, all of our expeditions are big, bespoke new levels in the game. And we have 14 of them ready for you to conquer when we ship on February 2nd, 2021. Of course we want to leave the excitement and fun of exploring these new areas for you. But hey, let's take a quick peek, shall we? I've sensed a deep, humming noise reverberating from deep within the forest. It comes and goes, but during our journey it has grown louder. And next to this gate, it is more piercing than ever. Outrider, I need to know the cause of this. Tiago was right about that hum. 
My teeth are chattering from the vibration. Strange structure. Some kind of switch over there. obelisk mechanism in the middle could be the way forward I can't wait for you and your friends to face Enoch's ultimate challenges. I hope you liked what you saw and as always, stay safe out there and take care of each other. Sven out. <laughs>